everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Time and On Tap. This today we're filming on the 5th of uh, August, also known as Revolver Day. Um, about 47 years from the release of the album Revolver. Um, we have a great guest tonight in Sky Chase. Uh, we have Alan Billings working the production studio. We got Jared. Jared, come, why don't you wait to everybody in front of the camera because they haven't seen you on the show in a while. People aren't going to believe that you're here. So as you remember, if you're a fan of the show, Jared occasionally pops on. Uh, we, we, premiered his, we world premiered his movie here, and uh, now he's working back. Jared, how have you been? I've been good. Any, any exciting news that you need to announce? Uh, not really. Awesome. Back to the control room, I go. He's going back to the control room because he has to produce a show because Alan needs help. Alan... Alan's doing an excellent job. You just need, you could do a better job with Jared helping him. Uh, all right, so um, make sure you're following us on uh, social medias, uh, the Facebooks, Timing on Tap, sla or Facebook slash Timing on Tap, Google Plus, no, he's on Google Plus, uh, Timing on Tap Show, on uh, Twitter, YouTube, Timing on Tap, uh, Vimo, we have a Vimo channel. Um, you can download a podcast from. Um, iTunes, Stitcher, any of your favorite podcast uh, locations, including Podcast Galore, Podcast R Us, and Back Alley Podcast. Uh, we're also on Flickr, uh, flickr.com slash timing on tap, and Instagram, so you can see a bunch of selfie, selfies of Alan. Uh, Instagram slash timing on uh, time and underscore on underscore tap. Um, Alan, you, can you run through all those? Do you have uh, lower thirds for all those to show everybody? Okay, he's showing you guys. So make sure you check them out. Uh, next week, we have a band called Circadian. Um, this is my second time doing this intro, so I'm not going to make the bad joke about them putting us all to sleep again. Um, we have, uh, coming soon, we have a new segment, and I think Alan is the most excited about the segment of all of us. Uh, this segment is, oh yeah, make sure you hashtag Time on Tap and hashtag WPAA. Try to get this uh, trending. I think we almost got it trending once, right, Alan? Did we almost get it trending? We almost got it trending once. Uh, all right, so coming up, we're going to have an awesome, awesome segment called uh, Alan on the Streets. Him and uh, Jared are feverishly producing it right now. Uh, they're going to start in Wallingford and take it to the mean streets of New Haven, maybe to Manhattan one day, where uh, Alan gets to be Alan on the streets of uh, your city. If you have a request, why don't you... Um, Call 203-265-6310 and say, Hey, Alan, this is what city you need to go to next. We can go to Derby, to Wilkett, uh, and Sonia. At, watch Alan walk around in the streets of Ansonia. Maybe even Middlebury. He'll get around. Granby. All these towns. Where's Alan going next? Um, next week, like I've said before, our band, the band is Acadian. They're new age folk music, like stuff you would hear in a spa, I believe. Um... Uh, yeah, so that that's it. I mean, um, so oh, also thanks everybody for watching last week's episode, the second most watched episode in the history of Time and on Tap. Uh, not in due to a small part due to Alan Billings producing a great show. Alan, well done. <laughs> Alan, why don't you come out in front of the camera and take a bow for the uh, well uh, done producing job? No, no, come on, come on, come on. Alan does not want to do that because he does not love you guys. What's up with that, Alan? What's up with that? All right, um, and also, um, friend of the show, Justin Martell, uh, is a member of the Troma family. Troma had a big weekend with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and so, just want to uh, tell him good job and good luck with uh, his next film, uh, Megafoot. Uh, yeah, as you remember, he's been on the show with his band, uh, Medicine of the Quay, and his movie project that he was working on, uh, Megafoot, which is about a mecha. Uh, Bigfoot. It's going to save America from the Nazis or something like that. All right. And uh, I think that's it. So, Alan, let's go to a PSA and come back with Sky Chase. Hey, welcome back from the break. I hope you enjoyed that PSA. Uh, so, I'm going to introduce to you uh, Sky Chase. Sky Chase. There's Sky Chase, everybody. Hey. Hey, guys. So, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Jenny. I sing vocals for Sky Chase. My name's Clark. I play the drum set. My name's Dave. I play the guitar. So, do you guys not have a bassist? 
We don't. No. We, he plays it on the recordings. Uh, overdubbed? Yeah. Uh, I see. All right. Uh, so, when did you? Uh, so, tell us a little about about yourself. Like, how did you guys meet? Like, how did you guys decide? Man, these guys, good idea. Let's make a band. Yeah. Um. We. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my brother and me. This is Dave, my brother. So we've been we're related. Since, like for two years when we were at UConn together, we were writing music, and then we just picked up Clark like six months ago. So as a band, we're only six months old. So we're very like, baby yeah. band. We met in a, a Sky Chase one, like a five piece. Sky Chase. Yeah, our name is actually Sky Chase. Sky Chase. <laughs> uh, like, I guess like individually. Change the <laughs> change the lower third, Alan. <laughs> That's an option. I mean, we could change it. All right. Yes, on the That's host. what people think. But so Sky Chase is actually from Sonic. If you guys didn't know that. Okay, that's cool. Sonic Two. It's a really cool stage when you're flying in the plane. Yeah, I'm yeah. aware of Sky Chase. I'm uh, kind of a nerd myself, yeah. so I mean, it's, it's pretty Genesis cool. Genesis Kid? I had a Genesis, yeah. That's good. Because Mortal Kombat didn't have blood in the uh, oh, yeah. SNES. Mortal board. Kombat, I like that. I you know, the music. I, I, I found my Genesis, Genesis with all my Genesis games like recently. It's like 30 of them. Do you have a Genesis? You know what I've been getting into? My dr uh, Dreamcast. I took it out of the box recently. and I'm, like uh, So I, I moved to a house like about a year and a half ago, and... Um, I'm still taking stuff out, and I found my um, my Dreamcast, and that's like going back to like the summer of '99, or no, summer yeah. 2000, and reliving my early high school years. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, we thought of the band name because it's like it's just you know, nostalgia from our childhood. It's just like we're still young again. We like it. So. Uh, yeah. so that's the idea. Is Sonic like you like? Is that like collectively you guys voted on your favorite game, and like that's how no, we're gonna choose it? Like, not at all. did Doctor <laughs> Robotnik lose? <laughs> What was it? We showed up. We showed up to that gig, and the guy was like, "What's your band name?" We didn't have one, so we we're just like, yeah. "Uh, Sky Chase." Yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sonic music. I don't know. It sounds different. People who don't know, like people who aren't nerds, like they, they're like, "Oh, that's a cool name." It's like you just know the meaning. <laughs> well, it's kind of like you guys are an alternative rock band, but if you're like more of like a folk rock band, I feel like it would have a much different uh, meaning for the people that are like going out to see uh, your music. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's kind of techy, maybe. It's yeah. about video games, less down. I don't know. It works. A folk thing. I think it works. Yeah, it works. I mean, if a band can get around with uh, being named Nerf Herder, I think you guys can probably get around. Or ball around. surfers. Yeah. You know, I was actually listening to them today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I not bad. Yeah, the uh, song Pepper. I don't mind the song. Yeah, it's actually uh, on XM. I was like, I actually, I had a, I haven't heard that song in like years, and like I heard it on the radio, and I'm like, I bought it like in my car, just like I had it, that song, like, I forgot all about it. Nice. They're they're great. There. This song, like that band was together since like 1981, and their first big hit was in 1996. So yeah. Like wow. Well. Alternative rock, like weird psychedelic Probably rock. Probably kind of a little bit. Yeah. Maybe kind of like the Flaming Lips type of thing <coughs> going on. I don't know. Okay. So, so all right. So um, so let's talk about like the how do you did you define your musical style and okay. It's kind of a modern take on. Blues, I guess you say. Yeah, modern take on blues. Okay. So, what bands were you listening to, but uh, before you guys started, like, what 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 are your musical tastes that you took into the band? Start with you, Dave. Uh, probably a lot of jazz and um, prog rock. Um, a lot of solo acoustic too. If you ever heard of um, Tommy Emmanuel, uh, he's like a solo acoustic artist, and he does um, really cool things because he kind of does like a hybrid picking style where he's kind of playing a bass line and picking with his fingers, you know, doing like voicings, and then he just goes into a solo. Because the thing is, we don't have a bassist, so yeah. I'm sitting there trying to balance out the melodies, and i got to kind of take elements from different musicians who've done very interesting things. So, like, but musically, uh, yeah, just like prog rock, jazz. Kind of the same thing for me. Um, I think... I think we can all relate to listening to Led Zeppelin a lot. Uh, John Bonham was probably my first influence even before I really uh, started playing the drums. I was really attracted to his style and uh, just you know, that, that music. I think they, you know, they tended to be pretty innovative with incorporating a lot of blues, a lot of those early uh, uh, rock groups from like the late 60s. But like Led Zeppelin was kind of like, you know, maybe a little more proggy in a yeah, way. Yeah. So. They're very nerdy. Like if you like like Tolkien, you like oh, Led yeah. Zeppelin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that too. Um, 
when I was growing up, listening to Cream a lot, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I was I was into a lot of blues stuff. Uh, had a Robert Johnson like box set. Tried to learn the guitar. Was okay at it and kind of gave it up and gravitated towards drums. And so, I guess a lot of my the influence I bring in is mostly rock based. But I listen to everything. So. And um, my father said we sound kind of like Jefferson Starship sometimes. So I I remember listening to them as a kid. Um, Not Jefferson Airplane. Wait, is well, that the one there's with there's Grace there's Slick? There's three bands. They're Who's kind the of the same. It's like a later inter incarnation. Um, right? I think okay. Jefferson Airplane is the one with Grace Slick. Okay. And she got became like a huge alcoholic and quit the band. And then they eventually yeah. became Starship, which did that s which had her in it again. I don't know. It got weird. Is that the built the city? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is not the one I'm talking about. But um, yeah, vinyl? Yeah. that yeah. I'm a big fan of Radiohead. Um, like that sound a lot. The Black Keys are a huge influence on me. I know they're like a newer band, but I really like them. That's kind of the neo blues. Yeah. And that's I what I think some of our songs Like their new album is like super blues rock. Like it's Yeah. Like I wouldn't even say it's alternative rock. I was like it's like a traditional blues rock album like from like the seventies yeah. or sixties. And you mentioned that you uh, enjoy jazz. So do you do like the New Haven Jazz Fest and like see all those people come in? I didn't see that but we, we were, were actually that there. same night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well yeah it's <laughs> like all month long. True. Uh, but uh, uh, that's cool. So you so I guess we'll, uh, we'll switch it up a little bit and just talk about uh, since we already kind of went there. Um, so do you guys gig a lot? Do you guys perform a lot? So are you guys only doing like uh, White Stripes covers because you don't have a basis when you perform live? Or <laughs> we don't ever see the White Stripes again. <laughs> we hate the White Stripes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we... What, what do you think? Oh, so like live, um, I mean, we've been together about six months and so we just kind of... Um, taking all the gigs we can get, I wouldn't say it's, it's like, you know, it's not every night, so to speak. It's probably once We've every couple jobs. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we make do live. I think we try to fill in the sound uh, where it's lacking from not having a bass. Um, seems to work pretty good. Yeah. But we're also not opposed to bringing on a bass player. Cool. So you guys are not like in the active stage of looking for a bass player. Someone comes along. And you yeah, not really. I mean, we've we've looked at a couple of people, um, and I guess stylistically it didn't work out. So we're just okay. You gotta find the right person, right? Yep. Um, so you mentioned uh, you mentioned UConn before. You guys were re uh, recording music. Uh, did you guys go to school for music, or was this uh, this? I, I did. Yeah. I don't know about these. No. No, I didn't. I did. You did? Yeah. I mean, I, I started out in my undergrad in music, and I was like, I don't want to analyze this stuff. Let me just do it on my own. And so. Yeah, I thought about it, but I don't know. You know, people kind of dissuade you. He, They're he, like he realized he needs, he needs uh, a career <laughs> after he graduates. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> the idea, right? I was a history major. It's not much better. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think I, I I could have enjoyed doing music, but yeah. I mean, I mean you did it, so like yeah. So what did you find fun about the major? Like, what did you enjoy about taking music class and having that structure every day? Well, um, I would say it gives you a greater appreciation of, of different styles, the history of it. Mm -hmm. um, music you, history. Yeah. yeah, music history. You learn where it all came from, mm -hmm. so it just kind of gives you a, a deeper appreciation of what you're doing. Where your, where your pieces and the whole puzzle of. Did you ever take that world history class? I think I did. Yeah. Time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. Did like play well, the instruments in class? Yeah. Um, it's called I Indian sitars. Oh no no I, I, I don't think they had that when I was there. No, so we have a common connection. He was in another band with us, which we ended up fishing the other two members and taking Clark and stealing him. So. Long story. Right, so you guys said. Uh, so I gotta ask for that. So you guys said that you get together for six months. So if you're in another band together, you guys were obviously in a band for a lot longer than six we months. We had playing ago. experience together. Probably well, that band was only like four months prior. Yeah. Though. Okay. Yeah. So. So we were acquainted with each other. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you guys find each other then with that band? Were you just like an ad on Craigslist or Match.com? Match.com. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that was Craigslist actually. The first band was. Yeah. That's what you get when you get Craigslist, though, because those other two guys 
Oh, oh yeah. nobody stole your stuff, so I guess it's a plus, right? I mean, maybe somebody did steal your stuff. Maybe that's why the band broke up. But if you, like if something bad doesn't happen mm -hmm. to you on Craigslist, then you're in the positive, right? That's true. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Did, wait, did did we lose something? <laughs> Our oh yeah. Maybe? yeah. Our time. I, <laughs> I my hands bled on his yeah. guitar when I was playing. Oh, yeah. That's like my revenge. We're like. <laughs> Is it like uh, Ringo Starr yelling, my fingers are bleeding type of thing? Or were you just like, did you cut yourself and you're like, oh, I'm bleeding on your guitar? I, his strings were so horrible, honestly, that I just like, I looked down and there was it blood all over the guitar. It wasn't the strings, it was just the way you were playing. No, it was the strings. Or your fingernail no, like, got snagged. No, it was the strings. Were, you, really actually, were you actually playing when you cut yourself or did you just cut yourself on the strings? The string cut my nail and my finger. It was so You're sharp. Playing. And then I, there was blood all over it. And Too bad it wasn't Rather than show. helping me with my no. finger, he's just like, my guitar, my like guitar. Like a guitar show. Yeah. Blood spurting everywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is an awesome story. <laughs> it was um, only practice, though. <laughs> it was but only in, the, in a basement somewhere. <laughs> Doesn't it wasn't matter. too glamorous. Yeah. So it's not very glamorous. You were just in a basement? Yeah. But, I mean, you just, like, you guys were bleeding on instruments in basements. I mean, that's kind of... Yeah, that's yeah, yeah like the effort was... I mean, his guitar is always going to be stained with my blood, so it's pretty awesome. This is like the most metal <laughs> story ever. It wasn't even metal. The <laughs> band wasn't metal. metal. You're in a basement. I, I think we were playing Tom Petty when it happened. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. It's anti-metal. Oh, man, you should be like, we're playing Slayer. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going so hard. Or Norwegian death metal or something like that. Like, just like... Going crazy. All right. That's pretty cool. But you know what they say, like everybody talks about how they like put their blood, sweat, and tears into some of a project, and like they really mean it figuratively. Mm -hmm. You guys can say you did it literally, assuming yeah. that you guys cried and at least yeah. sweated. I actually yeah. cried. I cry usually during rehearsals. He cried. The yeah. guy with the guitar. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're a drummer, so you probably sweat too. So I mean. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so your blood, sweat, and tears are definitely actually in your music. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's go to a PSA break after that kind of awkward conversation about sweating. Um, <laughs> all right, Alan, PSA break. All right, so we're back from a uh, PSA break. You got so have you guys have been uh, since you only been together uh, six months? Like that's not nearly enough time to put together an album. Have you guys been recording a lot? Um, we've, yeah, it's it's. I live an hour away, so it's kind of a, a pro big project to get together to record. Uh, but we we have a couple of uh, tracks that we got down. These guys work together a lot with their own and uh, when I get a chance I'll come in and, and put down the drum track but uh, we're working on an album the album should be out in the f at the end of the fall you know we have the songs we just got to get into the studio and get them all done you have know? you guys ever tried like recording the parts separately like you record the drums like by you then like send them uh, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful I, uh, I don't have great recording equipment besides a uh, little zoom mp3 recorder so when they put yeah. it together, it sounded like uh, cardboard boxes. And it <laughs> synced perfectly. Sync, yeah, synced well. But so in theory, it could work. You just need to work. Just need. Uh, maybe you could like shift the mic back and forth. Yeah. Could do that. We should do that. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, good idea. Maybe, maybe, Somebody's maybe people can send you emails and suggest how to help us. Yeah, send us an email. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, long distance recording. Well, uh, do you guys? Uh, have you guys heard of the band Riverdale? They're they were, um, they were all local band like in the early part of 2000, late 99, and they're, like they were kind of big in the pop punk scene, and they like broke up. And the guy who's what what instrument does Trader play? I think it was bass, mm -hmm. and the bassist for uh, Grover Dill um, used to work in the studio, so he would have been the appropriate person to ask. But since he now lives in LA, being a rock uh, star, um, you know, it happens. But uh, he supposedly recorded an album, a whole album once uh, with this person he met online through. Uh, they both had rock band, not rock band, garage band. Mm. So they would record. So there was only two of them. And they recorded like all the instruments and all, like all the vocals. And they would just record like uh, the track, and then they would email it to each other, and they would put together the album. Yeah, it's easy. Well, you know the postal service. The postal service mailed their their yeah, early their, their tapes. Yeah. That's so they were called the postal service. That's the name of the band. Yeah. Uh. Really? They didn't do an album for a while. Then Owl City came out, and it was basically like a follow-up to like this is a different guy, but it sounds exactly like the postal it service. It really does yeah. sound the same, but a follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> was there really, uh, you know? No, I was joking. Like, I'm kind of, I was kind of an emo kid. So like, post service was kind of big, like in the, like when I was in high school, and like, uh, like everybody's like, man, I like this. I like wish the post service actually released another album. Like yeah. it was kind of disappointing. Like I like that, yeah. People mm. liked it, um, and that guy just recorded himself, right? The Owl City, like it was just like some dude on a, like a synthesizer. 
probably. I think, yeah, I think it was this one dude like this, like I like this sound. I'm gonna put this sound yeah. on top of that. Which actually, do you know the first uh, Foo Fighters album was all recorded by Dave Grohl, every single vocal track and every single instrument track. And then he uh, went around, like, they're like, hey, there's my new music. And he's like, I need band members. <laughs> and, like, it was going to be a side project for the people in Nirvana, but they're like, this, like, and then that was before Kurt Cobain died. Then when Kurt Cobain died, they're like, we can't really do this right now. Yeah. And that's why that guy, the bassist from Nirvana, never became a member of the Foo Fighters. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Yeah, that's just random, random facts. I'm really good with trivia. I remember random stuff. It's, like, useless, but... Anyways, um, so so you have all your songs writ, uh, wrote and um, you're ready to go. So do you so do you play them live then? So when you when you do a gig, do you ever do any covers or is this live music? It's mostly um, or new you know, series, original yeah. music, and then we we throw in covers. Like when we played Stella Blues on when was it Saturday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we did um, mostly covers, but then we had like five originals. We have like ten or eleven originals, so we are ready for an album. Like I said, we just got to record it. That's cool. That's cool. So, so you guys have only been around for six months, and you don't have an album out. So when, when you find gigs, what do they expect? They expect covers, or do they expect the original stuff? Or what? Because you know, you don't have necessarily have a track record to follow you guys, so they don't mm -hmm. people don't necessarily know what you sound like. We have like recordings, and we have videos of us performing at venues, so they see that, and they see like good venues, and they're like, okay, they've played there. It's kind of like our resume. Yeah. And then we have decent recordings of two or three songs that they can hear the sound and they can hear that we're like you know, know somewhat we skilled musicians and they can you know stuff. you guys are only somewhat skilled? well I don't want to say but <laughs> it, it also depends on the venue and the length of the set if it's like a half hour set we'll just play all originals uh, if they're asking us to play two or three hours we have to fill in the space so mm. that's cool yeah <coughs> that's the main thing just filling in the space because if you're there on stage and you just yeah, gotta do something. Yeah, we tried to do that once. We just sat there and didn't play, but uh, we ended up not getting paid. So <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like a fun time. We, we played um, John Cage's piece over and over again. Was it four minutes, thirty-three seconds, or something? What, <laughs> what is that? Uh, John Cage wrote a piece that's just silent. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That is really funny, actually. Um, so when you don't play your own music, what music are you playing? Are you just playing the things that influence you, or do you guys like say, "Man, we we sound like this band, so we should perform some of their songs"? I I kind of leave it to Jenny because she knows her voice the best, and um, you know I can't say, "Oh, let's let's play Metallica because you know rocks," and but you know she can't sing Metallica, so I just leave it to her to decide. Yeah, I, I try to pick stuff that fits our genre, like that would you'd hear on the same radio station on like Sirius XM with the same. But you know, I mean, we do uh, Foster the People, Black Keys, Coldplay, all all that, that kind of stuff. But then we do Led Zeppelin too, like we did Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. So. No air supply. No. <laughs> Sublime. No air, air supply, supply. He said. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe next show. <laughs> okay. They have one big song, right? Making love and ethanol, right? Yeah, there's a, they have a couple actually. They have a few hits. They were kind of popular, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. Much older than I am. Um, all right. Uh, so, how long have you guys been uh, musicians? Like, I, I know you guys did, did stuff in uh, college, but like, but uh, uh, you probably picked up a guitar before you were 18 years old, I assume. I mean, you didn't just like arrive at you kind of like, this is fun. I'm gonna try this out. Yeah, I played keyboard since I was like 11, piano I guess, classical, but um, I kind of quit when I was like 13 because I just want to do like I guess more rock oriented stuff and uh, kind of switched to the guitar. Actually I took lessons. I was, yeah. You we realized the guitar was better, right? Yeah. I didn't, well, I mean keyboard's good. I went back to it kind of too. So, but um, keyboard, you know, better for jazz, I'd say. So that was cool. And uh, done. <laughs> I think I'm done. You play the violin <laughs> too. I started, uh, I think, like when I was eight, with guitar, and then, um, then I played the sackbutt. 
in um, middle saxophone. school. Yeah. Wait, was, is that like saxophone? Or? No, it's actually it's like a um, medieval um, <laughs> trombone. Okay. I didn't really. I just wanted to say sax, but. But is that an actual instrument? It is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you said this in fr uh, before in front of people. That's why people are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I no, a funny word. I but seriously, I, I played trumpet in middle school. Then um, I think I actually tried drums, and then I quit because I, I hated it. And then um, then later on, I got involved with marching band in high school. Uh, borrowed a drum set from a friend of the family and kind of just went went from there. I've just been a vocalist since I was really young, like seven, and um, I only recently picked up acoustic guitar and a little bit of piano when I was 20, so never touched it when I was younger, but now I dabble in it. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So so now you're just like, I, so do you, as part of this band, do you, do you bring the, your acoustic playing, or do you just kind of do it on this side? Yeah, I, I um, at, at our gig two days ago, I, I play like, I'll do some rhythm and fill in, because he has nothing, and I feel bad, so I just play some chords, and, you know, I'm not lean, but I can definitely play rhythm. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, so, we'll talk about some of the venues. What, where, what venues have you played? I played Toads, um, yeah. Still Blues, Webster, we Webster, um, uh, Webster The Space. Underground, yeah, Webster Underground. I mean, the, the, the top floor of the Webster is not that great. I don't know why people are just I'm saying, sure, uh, but that's everybody's like, oh, we're at the bottom floor of the Webster. It's like that's it's much more intimate. Uh, yeah. Intimate. Yeah. Intimate. Like yeah. It's all like the high school bands, too. Yeah, yeah. a few high school bands that perform there. A lot. Those are our... Or good amount. Those are well, our... Well, depends. Our depends. It's our audience when we play those shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's our Pretty experience ridiculous. with that. But, uh... I mean, which is, which is... I mean, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, like, a lot like, of talented young musicians out mm -hmm. there. It's cool to... It's kind of the band experience doing. sometimes when yeah. you're just getting started. It's just, you know, so playing you, the bands. You play with a lot of uh, like high school. You play with around a lot of high school kids. So are you like, are you going? Well, to that like happened once. It happened once. Yes. Okay, at the Webster. Yes. <laughs> so you typically don't play around high school kids. It, I mean, yeah, it's no. hit or miss, but no. not usually. Well, I feel like if like it was at Stella Blues, there'd kind of be an issue with their parents, right? Yeah. Yeah. In, in a bar, yeah. What was the other place we did? Cafe Nine? Yeah, Cafe Nine. Cafe Nine, yeah. Mm. I like that, that place. Yeah, that was a nice little venue. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, it's a great, it has a great atmosphere there. I like it. I'm not trying to... Plug them. Yeah. No. Not, we're talking about them in a critical sense. So yeah, it's not yeah. They have a good atmosphere. And they also are like... It's like so chaotic there. Like they're on like... like for like They had a prep crawl uh, on St. Patrick's Day. And so a bunch of us showed up there. And they're like, wait, there's a pub crawl going on? Like you're on the list, and like, what's a drink special? And we showed him, and she's like, eh, "Any drink you want, I'll give it to you for the drink special." It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, should be a little more organized than this, right? <laughs> um. So, do you get to go out and do a lot of event, uh, do a lot of live performances? Like, since you've only been around for six months, I feel like you've done a lot of uh, live stuff in six months. Granted, it's summer, so there's more live shows to do. Yeah. But like, I feel like in the six months, it's been like really like jam packed full stuff. Yeah, it's been crazy. Um, yeah. Because we just want to play gigs. Like, we want to get our music out there, and we love the adrenaline rush of playing live. So, you know, we'll probably slow down for the fall so we can record, but it was fun. So you don't have a bunch of internet presence? No, we have, yeah. You, we have a website. Yeah, we have a website. Yeah, yeah but it's, like, one picture. What, were you supposed to be working on that? Is there a picture of at least the banners? There's like a random picture of like It says like Go, go Daddy, like your website. Like no, no, we didn't no. say that in default. <laughs> Lorem ipsum dolores. Yeah, it's like domain not found. Yeah. No, there's pictures. There's some pictures. I miss GeoCities. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. My band in high school had GeoCities. Cool. Yeah, fan of Rapture. You know, GeoCities in uh, Japan, they did not shut down the Japanese version really? of GeoCities. Like, you can still, like, Go to a Japanese site hosted by Jews. Can you can you get on the you can't get on the old sites obviously like I think somebody archived them all. Up. Oh really? Yeah. Check that out. That was interesting. That I was, yeah, yeah, I always thought it was pronounced Geo Sites or something. Is there an I E S I E S at the end? Is it not? It's Geo Cities. <laughs> it's I E S. Yeah, it's uh, Geo Cities. This is a big deal. Like what? Didn't like uh, Yahoo pay like a billion dollars for that or something like that? And then like they're like we don't know how to make money off of this. Like just yeah. Huh. One of those. 
You no, know, it's cool because they had all their websites organized in like in like they call them towns or cities or whatever. And so like mm. you'd be like Tacoma, and that'd be like a theme. It could be like uh, like the UFO webpage theme would be in Tacoma. Yeah. Actually, that's probably like Roswell or whatever. They'd have a city, mm. and you'd go there, and then, like all the sites would be linked together. So it was like kind of like web rings. Mm. That's some cool stuff back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so so you're on so you're not on GeoCities, but you're on MySpace. No, <laughs> we're not, not on MySpace, but um, we're on the you know. The successor. Are you on SoundCloud and um No. Nope. Uh are we yeah, we are. No. We just Herb. no one really Reverb uses Nation. Well, yeah. I put stuff on SoundCloud. No one goes on. SoundCloud's like a you know, kind of a personal thing you put on your oh. little recordings, I guess. But, or maybe not. That's that anyway. So we we're, we're on Reverb Nation, uh Reverb Nation's forward slash sky chase. Yes. Yeah. No, not the third. No, no, she took three out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a three at the end of our name, like lead speak kind of. Three? They don't know what that is. This, this people that watch the show know what lead speak is. <laughs> okay, I, I was just kidding. I know you guys do. We had an episode where I programmed for a half hour. Like, is so that like the Linux thing right there? That's just, no, the studio uh, mascot is uh, Penguin. Oh, I thought it was the Linux guy. Okay. Boo cool. Linux, go uh, free BSD. Is that too nerdy for everybody this here? This is like third <laughs> speak, we don't know. But what is, what is that, BSD? It's uh, Berkeley Software something. It's basically like the there's so there's Unix, which is like the father of all um, pr um, operating systems that aren't Windows. And then like uh, BSD is actually like a flavor of it, and uh, Linux is a Unix-like operating system, so it's a major competitor. And uh, Mac OS is built off of uh, BSD. Hmm. So that's the history in computer science. So okay, so enough about uh. All right, well, I guess I'll ask you guys, are you guys <laughs> Mac or PC users? I have a PC. Yeah, I have a PC, but, but I have an iPhone, too. I don't know. I, I'm frustrated with the, the whole touchscreen uh, direction. I have Ubuntu. Okay. Huh? So, so, did you, <laughs> so you installed it yourself, or did you buy, like, when the pre-installed Ubuntu? Uh, <laughs> I installed it myself. Stop laughing. I don't believe it. So you <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. What, why right. there's everybody laughing? <laughs> I, I don't know. There's a brother sister thing. I'm just in the middle. <laughs> she doesn't believe in her <laughs> abilities. Yeah. No, actually, I mean we have Linux at, at my job, and I had to learn it pretty quickly. It's it's very confusing to use, but it's actually kind of like a Mac. Cause I have a Mac at home, yeah. and it reminds me a lot of like a MacBook. So it's, yeah, well, it's not yeah, that bad. Yeah, they're both Unix, right? They're yeah, both it's, Unix. it's not difficult. Windows, I think, is more difficult. If I tried to use Windows 8, like forget it, you know. So. Yeah, it's kind of got that whole app thing going. Yeah, I hate Windows 8. So. It's really annoying. Windows 8 pretty bad. They already announced Windows 9, so... Hopefully well, it's, hopefully it's, it's just Windows 7 again. Yeah. yeah. It's closer to Windows 7, supposedly. Uh, isn't it like every other Windows is good? Yeah. Sure. Wow, yeah. that's true. XP, then... No, so Windows 7 was good. Vista sucked. Vista, yeah, Vista... Well, so Windows 2000 Wait, was good. Then XP M was good. XP was good. ME was bad. Yeah. So, 2000, XP... Oh. Wait, ME came after? F XP? ME came out after 2000. So it was 2000, then it was ME, then it was XP, then it was Vista, then it was 7, mm. now it's 8, and then there's going to be 9. So yeah, every really year. So wow. Nine's good. Mm. All right, I mean, this is so not related to anything we're at this show. <laughs> 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 so all right, so let's, let's go to um, our final PSA break. We're going to come back with your uh, song. What song is it, guys? So Happy Now. So Happy. So let's talk about it, and then um, we're starting a new thing on the show where we're going to do one minute of trivia, and at the end of the season, um, I'm going to email the guest that wins, and I'll donate $50 to a charity of their choice. So that'll happen after we discuss your song. All right, A-Bills, take us out of here. <laughs>
So, um, tell us about that song we just saw or listened to. Um, it was inspired by an ex-boyfriend, so it's just like. Are you like Taylor Swift all day? <laughs> but I don't know. I, th I feel like I like to think I'm cooler than her. Which one? Taylor Swift, Swift. but not as cool as all, uh, Aldi or whatever. A, a D E L E. Adele? Adele. Adele. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, isn't, isn't that like a grocery store? Isn't that like a, yeah, a grocery store? <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I feel like I'm not as intense as Adele, but Adele goes there a lot, she, she's a little bit too intense, you know, for my taste. So, um, so you wrote the whole song, the music too, or just the lyrics? Uh, I wrote a little bit of the melody, melody, and then he picked up with the guitar pretty quick when I kind of played the riff, and then yeah. she just kind of did it, yeah. which is kind of how we write sometimes. Which is cool. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, so who's so? Are you the primary songwriter in the band, or? Pretty much. Um, you know, like I said, with the composition, he assists. So, so it's not just all me. Kind of maybe steer so you. You guys are like Glenn McCartney. So are you Ringo or uh, George? <laughs> Both. He's uh, Yeah, a little bit, of, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More like Ringo though. I have a big nose. That's funny. Um, all right. So, um, is this? Can people find this song anywhere? It's on your, uh, it's on it's your on social medias. Yeah. It's on Reverb Nation. Yeah. Okay. So, so they can go listen to it right now if they want to, or just rewind yeah. the YouTube video yeah. of like thir thirty seconds and then keep playing it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then you can keep listening to the song and the. In the uh, in the show, yeah, uh, it's on Reverb. Okay, so check them out on Reverb if you want to hear more of it. Um, so, how often are you releasing? I know you ha it's taking you some time to record a song, but how often do you like to release uh, new material? Like, is it are you going to wait till you have enough for an album, or are you going to slowly have it trickle out like this? I think for us, since we're such a baby as a band, we're going to you know focus on getting that album out first, and then eventually, you know, because songs come to us like every month or every two months, so. That's how it's been going right now, right? About that. With the full development, yeah. With the full development, but yeah. But I mean, like, ideas are just Ideas there. come all the time. It's so. just kind of a fun thing to do is songwriting. Yeah. So you're not going to do an EP? You're just going to go for the full album? What's that Irish singer, Hoser? Um, his new album that's coming out in um, October is his I, uh, his, uh, his EP from last year plus six songs. So it's like he didn't... This is like half the album he didn't actually record for the album. He's just like, I got these material, let's make it an album. Yeah. yeah. It's we could do that. Now he has a huge hit off of that EP. And now it's going to sell a whole bunch of albums. So people who already bought the EP and just going to buy the album. That's yeah. annoying. Yeah. All right. So um, so I want to do something. So I, I, like I said before, this is a new thing. We're going to uh, do a minute of random trivia. All right. So I'm going to let you guys pick your uh, category to mm -hmm. be more fair. Uh, you can pick stuff, arts, history, um, Wait, is this Trivial Pursuit? Music. Music. You're going to do music. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go to music. I thought you had, like, Trivial Pursuit cards just under the table. <laughs> you better All right. Um, so do you want general music? Do you want a specific decade? Do you 90s. want um, Adele? Adele, Adele's our own, uh, champ, our own thing. Sure, Adele. Oh, boy. Uh, let me finish reading it, though, so in case you guys think yeah. of anything else I could possibly... Um, <laughs> all, the, all the music. Um... <laughs> Uh, alternative slash indie, The Beatles, uh, Beyonce, Bob Dylan, Bollywood, Boy Band, oh Britney Spears, no, no, Brit Pop, know. Bruce Springsteen, Classical. Brit Pop. Oh, come on. You don't know yeah, I'm lost. Go for it. You you like you know is there like a classic rock one? Fine. Just give us an easy one. Or we don't we want to do classic rock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's do yeah, yeah, we got it. Uh, We're going to know nothing. Like when were you born? 1990? Me? It doesn't matter. It's him. <laughs> doesn't matter. I can ask you uh, Bob Dylan questions if you need them. Maybe worse. No, All right. Like so there's Coldplay. There's a Coldplay. Coldplay. Kit. Oh my God! I know everything about Coldplay. Oh All right. So we're gonna do Coldplay. Yes. Okay. I right. win. I will. I'm win. just gonna sit here All and right. uh, go for it. <laughs> True story about Coldplay. They were playing at Hartford a couple years ago, and I love me and my roommate them. saw them, but we didn't know each other at the time. But we're both at the concert. It's kind of weird. So we're That's both what like Coldplay does. It brings people together. No, we didn't actually meet each other there, but we have later reminisced the concert. And when we tell people the story about the Coldplay concert, we talk about it as if we were there together because we had the same stories about the same show. There you go. It's kind of weird. Interesting. <laughs> All right, play now. How many copies 
of X and Y were sold worldwide? Yellow. <laughs> 13 million, 19 million, 17 million, 11 million. 11 million. 13 million. Oh, I knew it was 13. Alright, round two. What percentage of profits does the band give to, does the band give this to is, Why is it number? Yellow. Like, I'm not a number person. 15, 10, 2, or 5. Wait, give this to what? It's like not Charity. fair. Uh, 5. 15. <laughs> 10%. You guys are close. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with their history. This is just numbers. Well, what is the name if you're a real Coldplay's fan, second you know. live album? Coldplay's Yellow. Second yeah, second live album. <laughs> you Denny, know. Denny. No, 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 wait. Wait, what? It's either left and right. Hold left, on. right. It's left, right, left, right, left, right. That's what, they're ne that's what it is? Yes. But we ran out of time, so. All right. Which album did the song Moses appear player on? The Blue Room, Live 2003, Parachutes, or X and Live 2003. Correct. Got one. <laughs> All right. Can what song uh, has the line, when you replace something, you can't lose? Yellow. When you lose something, you can't replace. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't have said yellow. I'm pretty sure that it was it. It's Fix You. Yes. No, it's Speed. Oh, I knew yes, that. Yes, it's Fix You. Yeah. I knew that. So why did you say yellow? Because it's Coldplay. Chris Martin uh, said song, uh, Johnny, or sorry, Green Eyes, was written for Johnny Buckland and who? World Champion? Um, American Friend. Yellow. American Friend? That's what it is. All right, last Johnny round. Yellow. Two times bonus. How many photos were included in the booklet, A Rush of Blood to the Head? Yellow. Four, three, two, or five? <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> Wait, four. Two. Okay. I don't like that app. We have a different... Subject. Do you want to do a different subject? Yes. Yeah. Do we have? It's all numbers. I don't remember numbers. Uh, <laughs> like if give you, us, if give you us ask me about like what color rock. his hair is, or yeah, like it's classic rock. I mean, I would do know. some. Uh, let's see what we got here. I, we're just gonna embarrass ourselves. Pink right. Floyd. Classic you know rock. about Pink Floyd, right? I will. I will combine your trivia scores because they're so low. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, you're in first place still. But. Okay. <laughs> What do you, you know about Pink Floyd, don't you? What's like a band you know about a lot? Let it doesn't, I mean, that doesn't matter. Yeah, I it's guess It's going to be luck of the draw. So. Yeah. Which of these songs reached, reaching number uh, 12 on the UK charts was the highest charting single by ACDC? Danger, Heat Seeker, You Shook Me All Night Long, or Highway to Hell? Number 12, <laughs> Highway when? To hell. Do we know? You Shook Me All Night Long. I knew it. Well, who said something? That I was going to say You said that. yellow. What fat, uh, fat Domino's hit originally recorded by Glenn Miller in 1940? The Fat Man, Blueberry Hill, a Blue Monday, Ain't That a Shame? Ain't That a Shame. Wait. Blue Monday. <laughs> <laughs> say that. <laughs> yes, I was. All right, fine. I won't, I won't talk anymore. All right. What group was inspired by... Uh, inspired to drive my car by their chauffeur... Oh, this is too easy. What, what group was inspired to uh, write, drive my car by their chauffeur? Wait, for the Beatles? Yes, it was the Beatles. Better you can drive So now you have two, th two songs. Okay. Two things for All right. Okay. Ray Charles recorded one mint julep in 1961. Uh, what is a mint julep? Mint julep. To the hooker? A flower? Can I say that? It's an alcoholic drink. Oh. <laughs> hookers on live TV. Uh, you can say hookers on live TV. Okay. Uh, yeah. On December 11th, 1967, what guitarist was electrocuted during the show? But returned uh, ten minutes later to finish the concert. Jimi Hendrix. Uh, no. Tommy Iommi. Actually, no, I was Ace Freely. I apologize. Ace Freely. Wait, doesn't electrocuted mean he means he died? No, he. he <laughs> <still survived. laughs> no, it's like execution, electrocution. The song uh, "Good Vibrations" was replaced. Never mind. Uh, we replaced which uh, track on side two of the Beach Boy album "Friends"? Was it "Passing By," "Diamond Head," uh, "Soup John B," or? Uh, or Good Vibrations. The, the, <laughs> di the, the diamond one? It is the diamond one. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Last question for this round. Who's the lead... Uh, what band is uh, Steven Tyler the lead singer of? Aerosmith. <laughs> Four points. Wait, you just came up with that question. No, it was really the last no. question. I actually, I was asking the questions slower than they were coming to me, so I actually had the next one already read by the time you oh, asked. Oh, okay. That. But you could that was a pretty easy question, though. I was actually almost didn't want to ask. That's why I said it with hesitation. It's the one I got, though. All right, so <laughs> four. All right, Alan, four. It was like 20, but... 
Wait, no. Okay, so uh, so everybody, thank you so much for watching the show. Sky Stakes, thank you for coming. Uh, go follow them on Facebook. Um, thank you guys for watching. Next week, uh, Katie and Sleep Cycles are going to be on here. Um, we'll see you all. Thank you.